Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are, wherever you are. You have tuned in to another episode of Affordable Model Railroads. You asked for it. My name is James. Got Ian operating the camera back there. And this is our, oh, sort of regularly scheduled, whenever we feel like getting time to post it up on the internet, show where we uh, teach you some, uh, show you some tips and techniques for building a model railroad. Today we are going to uh, show you, or I should say I'm going to show you, uh, the way that we do uh, ballasting that is uh, quick and efficient and gives you a very nice clean uh, ballast look to your, um, your tracks. A couple of things that uh, you'll notice we do this video, there's hundreds and hundreds of videos out there showing you how to do ballasting. Uh, some of the things that you're going to see here are a little bit different. Some of them are the same. We just have uh, mixed the best of the techniques in our belief to come up with one of the uh, most efficient ways to lay down your ballast, uh, save you some time, and make your uh, productivity just that much better. Uh, the first thing that you notice is our roadbed here is black. We, we don't use the standard uh, the cork roadbed for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, we produce our own uh, road bed here. It's uh, very flexible. It's a uh, synthetic material that uh, cuts nicely, shapes nicely. It's in one piece. You can bend it around a curve in one piece. You don't have to have the, the two pieces uh, separated uh, like you do with the cork road bed. And so right off the top, you're putting your road bed down uh, twice as fast, if not a little bit faster. You can glue this down with uh, standard Elmer's wood glue. Uh, I mean, uh, a school glue. You could uh, do the uh, wood glue, or you can use the uh, caulking method, which um, really takes uh, a lot of time. The uh, one thing nice about the, uh, the Elmer's glues or the carpenter's glue, you can brush them on very quickly, and you can lay the uh, roadbed down very quickly. It attacks pretty quick and it gives you time to uh, position it uh, before it tacks a little bit so you can kind of uh, get your curves nice and uh, nice and smooth here, your radiuses. And this is also, this is available in eighth inch thick, quarter inch thick, and three eighths inch thick for whichever scale or whether you're doing mainline tracks or if you're doing sidings you can use the thinner eighth inch. The quarter inch we find is a little more prototypical in height than your typical 3 16 inch and then we also have a more prototypical 60 degree bevel which is a little bit sharper bevel that a lot of the class 1 mainline railroads use we have the standard 45 degree bevel that you find on your uh, cork road bed and then we also have a 30 degree bevel that a lot of uh, your branch lines and short lines would use uh, less of a bevel and uh, a little bit less high of uh, road bed. So we have quite a, quite a bit more options and uh, you can contact us uh, directly at uh, affordable model railroads gmail.com uh, if you want to reach us by email or you can always call 800-216-9202 if you want more information uh, on our uh, road bed. Alright, so we have the uh, track down here and uh, we've already painted, we've already pinned it down and we've painted it and so we're ready to lay the ballast and the tools you need for the ballast is simple white glue, a little spritzer bottle of uh, alcohol and a little bit of your favorite uh, ballast or scenery glue, a container to uh, apply your uh, your ballast with and then of course your, uh, your ballast of your choice. Uh, we're using uh, our own ballast that we produce by Affordable Model Railroads um, all of our ballasts are real materials. It's, uh, we um, sift it out right here uh, at our shops and it's, uh, all of it is uh, either uh, real limestone or real granite and so that way you're not getting any um, weird materials that are going to float around on you or anything and they're going to um, less discoloration. Uh, there is a little bit of discoloration when you put your glues on but uh, have less discoloration with the, with the real granites and also it's uh, yeah you can't get more realistic than, than real rock right and then we have our little secret here which we'll show you when we use this here 
It's just a Bosch 12 volt uh, handheld vacuum. Um, but it is not only for uh, cleanup. We'll show you where we uh, that comes in handy also. Okay, uh, one last thing is uh, paintbrush of your choice for uh, spreading spreading your glue. So let's get started here. First thing we do, which is uh, pretty typical, we take your uh, Elmer's glue here and just open that up, and then. Uh, I just run a, a bead, put the nozzle right underneath the uh, ties there. That way you don't get any glue actually on the ties, or at least you keep it to a minimum. And then once you have that on there, you can come back with your paintbrush and just smooth that out so it covers the entire bevel of your uh, road bed. And that is a lot faster, I find, than the old method of having a little glue thing and trying to get in here and dip it in your glue and the old India well wing, as I, as I used to call it, India ink well. And that takes a long time. If you just uh, spread it and spread it, it takes uh, virtually no time at all. And you come back and do the same on the other side. And you can see how quick and easy this goes down here and if you keep your brush right above those uh, or right below the ties there it uh, keeps it from getting the glue on the ties I know some people that actually mask off the uh, the ties so they don't get glue on them you can go to trouble if you want but it takes a lot of extra time to do that All right. So after you have your uh, glue bed laid there, we take our container filled with ballast, and you've all seen the old method with the uh, spoon and dip it on there and spoon it out, and spoon it out, spoon it out. And that that again that takes forever. But this way here, you just put your container right on top of the ties, and you can see it puts a nice little bead of ballast right on top of the ties there. And you come back the other way and you see it starts to flow a little bit over the edge and onto your glue. And you do the same on the other side. And you see how quickly this is going on here compared to the old spoon method. Alright. And just come back with your thumb and your finger and draw it right along the track. And you'll see how the ballast naturally just flows right over the edge of the roadbed and flows down the side of the roadbed. And this does two things. One, this cleans the ballast off of the tops of the ties, but also, as you can see, it makes it flow nice and even just over the top of your uh, glue that you put down on the road bed. All right. All right, so there is one other uh, tool that I forgot to uh, use. You can use a, a credit card. This is a, a key card from a hotel all the traveling that we do, uh, building railroads for people, we uh, eh, have a few of these around. And this is used to just sort of push your ballast right up against. So you can use the, the paintbrush and whatnot, but I find that the paintbrush tends to flick the, the ballast off in all directions. This puts it right up against, creates a little barrier there so it doesn't really go too far. Just wipe it off every once in a while because it will get some glue on it. And that will maintain a very nice little, little ridge for your, uh, your ballast there. And then you can always come back and touch up a few areas that maybe need a little bit of touch up 
that you, uh, that you might have missed. This is one area where you can maybe use the spoon to kind of touch a few things up. Put it off your card and come back in here. And you see how we can kind of push this up the uh, up the bevel there, keep it nice and nice and clean and even. All right. Now to do your center, you just basically do the same thing. You just run your uh, ballast down the center of the ties there. Then I just take my finger and spread it in between the ties. Now, you don't have to be too clean with this, and I'll show you in a minute why if you have a little bit extra along the, uh, the edges inside the rail here, you might have some extra kernels in here. Um, usually you would scrape those out with something, make sure they're nice and clean. That's where this baby comes in. Uh, this Bosch one just happens to be just about the exact power that you need to just run it right along the top of the track and it neatly sucks up the ballast that's not between the ties but it sucks up all the ballast that's right along the edge and so you get a nice clean no ballast inside here same with the top of your ties here no ballast on the tops of your ties. And then just to reinforce that, just in case there's any left over, just take your plastic, your credit card, tap the rails, let any other ballast fall right off of the tops of your uh, ties there. All right, then we got this little spritzer. And I like using these little ones rather than the big ones because the uh, less power so they don't blow your ballast around and they. Uh, cover very neatly to uh, get your ballast wet there so that we can come back with our scenery glue. Now of course all the, a lot of the videos, magazines, things like that show you're supposed to use the eyedropper and the pipette to put it on there and yeah, it would take you an hour to do this. So what we do is I put it right on the rails, or sorry, right on the tie there, guide it by the rail as you can see that spreads nicely over your uh, ballast and it just it flows right down the side of the bevel from the wicking action uh, of the alcohol you can see right here where it's, it's nicely wicked down and then you do the same with your center and then come back over with your finger and just wipe off anything that might want to pool on the top of it and uh, take your finger and push in any little areas that you might need a little neatening up, a little straightening and there you go foot of ballast in under 10 minutes if you did this with the old-fashioned spoon and pipette uh, it would probably take you about an hour to do that so as you can see, we've uh, really cut down on the, uh, the time. And uh, let me show you some here. Move the, the camera and show you some that's already, uh, already dried. All right, so here you can see some that's uh, dried and, and set in place. And you can see how nice and neat and even and clean that is. There's a few little specks here and there on the ties. And if you want that uh, blemished, weathered look, you can always uh, you know, add a few on there if you'd like. Uh, we're going to weather this up uh, in another video. We'll show you how to weather the ballast and uh, uh, weather. I'll put some grease marks so and uh, that sort of thing. But that'll be for another episode. All right, so as you can see, we've got some really good-looking ballast here, and uh, we did it in uh, five or six or maybe even faster time than the old uh, 
pipette and spoon method, eyedropper and spoon method. So uh, feel free to, to try this method out on your railroad. Or if you want us to come out and build your railroad for you, you can always uh, have us do that. Just check our website, affordablemodelrailroads.com. You can look us up on Facebook at Affordable Model Railroads. Uh, search on Facebook. And uh, we also have our YouTube uh, videos, uh, which obviously you're watching this one. But you can check out the other videos on our YouTube uh, channel. So be sure that you uh, subscribe, like, follow, and uh, by all means, uh, send, us, uh, send us your comments and your likes. And I want to thank you for watching another episode of You Asked For It.